The changelog is brought to you by a pusher, and they're looking for a system engineer who specializes in evented systems. If that's you, send your GitHub profile, a cover letter, and your CV to jobs at pusher.com. And also use the coupon code the changelog to save 15% off your first month billing. Join the real-time web today at pusher.com. Welcome to the Change Log episode 0.7.8. I'm Adam Stachowiak. And I'm Wynn Netherland. This is the Change Log. We cover what's fresh and new and open source. If you found us on iTunes, we're also on the web at changelog.com. We're also up on GitHub. Head to github.com slash explore. You'll find some training repos, some feature repos from our blog, as well as the audio podcast. And if you're on Twitter, follow the Change Log and me, Adam Stack. And I'm Penguin, P E N G W Y N N. Fun episode this week. Talk to Eloy Duran of the Cocoa Pods project, which is basically um, bundler meets homebrew, except for binary. Uh, I guess not binaries. Libraries for your Objective C projects, your Cocoa projects. So no more downloading tarballs from blog posts to drag into Xcode. You now can install all those frameworks that you want to use uh, directly from your command line. How about that? That uh, pulling down and dragging over was a pain in the butt, huh? Yeah, I think. Uh, GitHub has changed the way we all work uh, in the Ruby space and other. We're getting, uh, I guess, penetration into other communities. So hopefully this will um, just further the way we share Objective C libraries across those projects. And I hear you also talked a little bit about Passenger Pane. Yeah, he's the developer of the preference pane for Passenger that I know you and I both used. Um, you either had the choice of editing the big config file in Apache or if you're on the Mac and you want to install uh, Passenger, which used to be Mod Rails, uh, there's a nice little pref pane you can snap into the Mac to configure all of that. He's the author of said utility. And if you're around, I guess, this August, and you're into Ruby, since we just mentioned Ruby, uh, Madison Ruby con- or sorry, MadisonRuby.org, we're actually going to be there. Wynn and I are going to be there doing our famous design eye for the dev guy or gal. Or gal. Or gal. <laughs> so if you go there and you go to slash register, you'll see that we're actually one of the workshop choices. So if you want to learn how to do the HTML5, the CSS3, and throw a little SAS and compass in there, uh, we'll teach you how. Well, color theory, a little typography, just basically the science of design as you and I have bloodied our nose on it along the way. Absolutely. Well, this sounds like a fun episode. Do you want to get to it? Let's do it. Chatting today with Eloy Duran from the Cocoa Pods project. So, Eloy, why don't you introduce yourself and a little bit about your background? Hi, Wayne. Um, my name is Eloy Duran. Um, I've been a long time Ruby developer. We're always interested in uh, Cocoa development. That's actually how I got started with the development. I just wanted to get something done for OS X and application. And by that time, I found the Ruby Cocoa and things started for me with programming. Um, since then, I've worked on. Uh, the, I've been on the core team of Ruby Coco, Mac Ruby. I've done a lot of Rails uh, work, like uh, accept, accepts nested butes, uh, accepts nested butes. Damn, I can't even pronounce it myself. <laughs> <laughs> accepts nested butes. Attri- ah, accepts, accepts nested, nested attributes. attributes four. Yes, there you go. that's the one. Um, <laughs> uh, the passenger pane, Mac Fim with a file browser, and uh, now Coco Pots. So let's talk about CocoaPods. It's basically a, a package manager built on Ruby, but for Cocoa uh, frameworks, right? Correct. Um, so we at Fingertips, we've been doing uh, Objective-C applications for clients for a while. And as I'm uh, spoiled by the, the Ruby uh, development environments, like Ruby Gems and Bundler and whatever, um, I was uh, starting to get a bit frustrated by the process of uh, integrating open source libraries into a project. And since I don't want to spend too much time on getting something to run and then afterwards find out that it might not be what I needed, um, I found that I didn't use that many libraries. Also, because it's very hard to find them, I I found. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, so every time I would find a library that would do what I needed after the fact. Um, And... 
at some point, I think it was they released the the what what did they call it? The iOS template, something like that. Mm-hmm. Bo- the boilerplate template. And uh, so by that time, I figured if the the solution in the community is going to be like templates, then what I wanted, like a package manager, was wasn't going to happen anytime soon. So uh, yeah, then you uh, need to stop complaining and start implementing. Is my motto. <laughs> Absolutely. So outside of CocoaPods, the, the normal procedure is you find a bit of open source on, on GitHub if you're lucky and it's well done. And then the instructions say, hey, drag this to your frameworks folder, right? Yeah. It tells you to clone um, and then add it to your project and then add the required build settings, add the required uh, frameworks to link against. And then usually it will miss one or two steps because the author forgot to update the readme in, while developing on it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It, it can take you like an afternoon that's just lost. So how much of this does CocoaPods automate? Everything. So what's the, the <laughs> workflow t- turn into? Um, so it's comparable to a bundler. Um, you have a, a file where you specify which dependencies you want to use. Um, and as long as there are specifications for that library, um, it will automate, it will create a separate Xcode project where it will include all the dependencies. And that Xcode project will then produce a static library. And the static library is then uh, your app, your application probably is linked against that static library, and that's all done in a workspace which was introduced in Xcode four, um, and that's all done automatic, all set up automatically by the tool. How are you persisting settings? Uh, I know npm has its JSON file, and there's a gem file for Bundler. What's CocoaPod use? Uh, so in your user project, you will use a pod file. That's what it's called, just like a gem file. It's very similar. Um, and the specifications for the libraries themselves are probably more what you meant by uh, NPM. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, a pod spec, like a gem spec. It's, I mean, I try to reuse uh, a lot of Ruby gems code as well. So things like the version uh, uh, class is already v- very well done in Ruby gems. So I'm just using those things. So they're very similar if you're used to uh, Ruby gems and Bundler. Have you developed a newfound appreciation for YCATs and the Bundler team for what they've done with Bundler? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, I think like a lot of people that are passionate about their environment and that have seen the whole environment grow from, um, I think we were, well, at least fingertips was, started, was using Rails since the since a month after the first release. So we've seen that the uh, environment grow. And then at some point, you start to feel like things like Bundler make things more difficult, especially because we're actually, and that might be a bit weird, we're people that don't like a lot of dependencies. So it might be weird for me to implement something like Cocoa Pots, but um, it 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 got a bit frustrated. And obviously, you have Twitter, and the the bar is very low, and you start hating on stuff uh, in quotes because it's not really <laughs> hating. Right. Um, but yeah, definitely, the way I see it now is that one once people start hating between quotes uh, passionately about Cocoa Pots the same way they do about Bundler, then I'm satisfied. <laughs> Have you found any barriers to adoption of it being a Ruby runtime and having to reach outside the the Ruby community to pull people in that might not have the Ruby stack? Um, so you mean users, right? Not collaborators. Right, yeah. Users that just want want to use the, the CocoaPods to to you know, pull down yeah. frameworks and install but may not be Ruby savvy. Well, in the beginning... Uh, it was way more because by that time I was using Mac Ruby um, because a Xcode project is a P list and I just wanted to uh, read it and write it without having to do any, anything difficult. And Mac Ruby, since it interfaces already uh, with the Cocoa frameworks that, that already supported everything I needed to just go ahead and build the core f- uh, code. Uh, I, I already knew, of course, that that was going to be a hassle for a lot of people. Um, people just don't feel they want to install something extra, an installer or whatever. Um, so right now we've switched to uh, MRI. It works on MRI. That, that has brought a lot of more people in it because it, ju- it will just work. Well, nowadays, again, it <laughs> won't because with the new Xcode 4.3, you have to go through all these hoops to install the right uh, compilers and things like that. But in general, it will just work and people will use it. On the collaboration side, however, that's obviously a lot more difficult because a lot of the people have never written any Ruby or seen it. Um, 
But yeah, I mean that was to be to be expected. I'm I've, I'm seeing a lot of col- collaboration though, so I don't want to um, put that down. Uh, there's there's a lot of people, especially like one guy that never wrote any Ruby and and had a a feature request, and we started talking, and then a week later he was uh, implementing everything. So that's cool to see. As an open source uh, project lead, I mean it's it's fun to watch people come into the community and dip their toe and and ask for something and then better yet come back with a patch for it definitely definitely well i try to steer it that way of course um you can't do everything um and sometimes you see the the benefit of a feature but you have to prioritize and there's so much still to be done that i can't get to all the fun features yet um and so i try to steer people to uh i like to discuss uh code not so much just uh bike shedding I, I want to prevent sure. bike bike shedding. So uh, asking for patches uh, and helping them out to get that patch done uh, really helps. And uh, then once somebody has something merged in, they'll they'll feel much more um, invited to uh, to do to work on other patches and uh, tickets. And that's worked out great for me. So speaking of features and and patches, what what, what do you see the roadmap for CocoaPods being? <sighs> so that's. Um, I'm not, I'm I'm not thinking too much about version 1.0 yet because that's where for me the big transition will be between uh, uh, one of the big things that will have to change at some point I think is uh, the way we distribute all the specifications. Um currently that's done as a, it's it's similar to homebrew. Mm-hmm. So the specifications are all in a, a git repository on the CocoaPods organization uh, on GitHub. Um and uh, that that works great while we're still actively developing stuff because it's very easy to to change the API of the specifications and go back and update them all or even have a branch of the specifications while we're working on a new on API changes. And that would be very hard if I would have started out with some kind of uh, real server or whatever that, that accepts JSON, uh, talks back in JSON. I mean... This works much easier for me, especially because I need to embrace the community as it already existed. And the Objective-C community already exists for a long time. And there's a lot of people doing private stuff internally. So having just a having them just create a Git repository for internal private specifications is the easiest thing that I could come up with. And that, I mean, that I want as less friction as possible for everyone until we can converge into, well, the final... Uh, way it will work, and that will most probably be a server like RubyGems has as well. So does CocoaPods require a formula to use homebrew terminology to be in the specs repo under your org, or can you uh, install from someone else's repo? Uh, specifications, you mean? Right. Yeah. So uh, what CocoaPods does is it, it just checks in your uh, home folder uh, under a uh, .cocoapods uh, directory for any directories um, which are expected to be specification repositories. And so you can just add a directory, add your specification, and it will be uh, usable. And there are many other ways um, to uh, inline in your pod file. You can define a specification if there isn't any specification yet or if you need some, if you have a fork or whatever. Um, there are many ways in uh, to to add specifications and use them without having them in the the public uh, specifications repository. I wanted to switch gears to talk about MacRuby for a moment. It seems like a couple of years ago it was red hot, and then everybody uh, that was in the Ruby community was excited about MacRuby. What's the state of that project? The state of the project is uh, currently. Um, I think there are a lot of people uh, still, if you watch the mailing list, there are a lot of people still uh, working with it. Um, I personally haven't had the time uh, to uh, work on it as much as I used to. So I can't speak for the community as it is right now. Um, but one thing that's uh, definitely for sure is that um, the, main, the, the main developer, the lead developer, Laurent Sansonetti, uh, isn't working at Apple anymore. And he has had to move and things like that to from the U.S. back to Europe. And I mean, that's that's it, it's it has stalled a bit for now. But as I, as far as I know, that will, he will pick that up again. And then um, I'm sure he has all kinds of ideas. But we haven't catched up about that yet. 
but uh, the way I use it, I mean, we, we st I still use it. And uh, we have a client, for instance, where we re just recently uh, implemented a, a specification runner, a test runner in uh, Mac Ruby for their uh, Objective-C iOS classes where they wanted a visual representation of the state of the, the game. Um, and for that, it works great. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure what to say about where it's heading or going because I can't speak for that. I'm, I haven't been that active uh, the last uh, few months. One of your more popular projects is Passenger Pain. It's a pref manager for Fusion Passenger. Was that a Mac Ruby project as well? It was a uh, Ruby Coco, actually. By that time, there was no Mac Ruby yet. Um, yeah, the difference is uh, marginal. It was Ruby. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can uh, you can see it on our uh, on our repository and browse it. Um, but we've rewritten it to be uh, Objective C. Um, but unfortunately, my colleague hasn't had the time to finish that up and release it yet. What was the uh, the motivation behind that project? Just scratching your own itch. Yeah, everything I do is scratching my own itch. <laughs> I uh, I. I have so many itches, and that's not because I don't shower and stuff, but just, <laughs> I mean, I feel the need for stuff when I'm doing it. I don't, I, re I don't think I ever really had, like, uh, it would be fun to do this or nice to do whatever. I don't even have the time for that. I just, uh, I, I, I come up with things that have to be solved while I'm working at work at my, at my job, and that tends to take up most of my time already, so, uh, yeah. It's all just scratch itch and the passenger pain. I'm not sure what the specific... I think because we're a consultancy, we just have so many um, applications at any given time on our hard disk. Um, yeah, so passenger pain was mainly, I, I think, because we're a consultancy and we have so many uh, applications at any given time uh, and we just want to easily add them, see which one have been added or what are the configured domains, things like that. And that's... That's basically everything it does. It doesn't show. And there have been a lot of requests for thingies like, I don't know, tail-specific logs or whatever. But that's just not the goal. The goal was just setting up applications, having a quick overview of what, which applications you have set up and uh, add aliases for their, for their uh, server names, things like that. So what are you scratching these days? Oh, uh, I, I really, 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 really... I have to not scratch anything else at the moment. Besides, <laughs> Cocoa Pots is uh, so much work. Um, and uh, I really have to even find the time to get to coding on Cocoa Pots because their last few weeks, at least, uh, let's say last month, I've been doing so much uh, project management because people are starting to do a lot of contribution, uh, which is nice for a change. Um, but... Um, I'm I'm sure that if I would try to think of it, I would actually. <laughs> just yesterday, I came up with something that I'm. I'm just now, now. Whenever I come up with something, I'll just put it on Twitter as my wish list. And if somebody knows of something that does it or has wants to implement it, then I'll be very happy. Um, that thing was a uh, a Ruby library that will uh, give you diffs of arrays and hashes and strings, uh, but a unified diff uh, and preferably with red and red and green colors because yeah i still find that in many testing frameworks uh, that i work with i still have to compare manually compare huge hashes or whatever and just that just takes up time so that's some of, that's something i would normally tackle right away but i i really have to refrain from doing those things because otherwise i wouldn't have any time for other things left hey adam here just wanted to take a moment and thank our sponsor hover.com for supporting the show we certainly appreciate their support. Hover is by far the best place to register your domains. We recently took advantage of their domain concierge service, which is completely free, by the way. We had over 30 domains that needed to move over from GoDaddy because, you know, for obvious reasons why we didn't want to use them anymore. And uh, Hover took care of everything. They took care of all the heavy lifting. It's this special service they have. It's called their domain concierge service, which basically means... You don't worry, they do all the work. They move over all your domains. They take care of uh, recreating your C name, your A records, your MX records for your email, everything. All you do is sit back and relax, and it's completely free. You actually talk to a human being to set it all up. It takes about five or 10 minutes. You call this 800 number, 866 
And uh, like I said, you talk to a human, they take care of you, they make sure that uh, you're uh, you're good to go. And just tell them what the, the changelog sent you. Use the coupon code the changelog to save ten percent on all the services that applies to. We certainly appreciate the support and thank you for trying them out. Hover.com. So digging into the pod spec format, I was at first thought this was closer to a gym file, but it's actually closer to a gym spec. Yeah. Yeah, so there are two things. Eh? So like with Bundler, so because uh, pods, as we call them, Cocoa pods, aren't installed into the system like Ruby Gems normally does. Uh, they're only used in a project. So that's more like a combination of Ruby Gems and Bundler. So you have two things. You have the pod file, which is like the gem file with Bundler, and you have the pod spec, which is like the, the gem spec in uh, Ruby Gems. So Jonah Williams from Twitter asks, um, how do you push for greater adoption of, of pods and what advice do you have for getting sourceless pods? Sourceless pods? Um, I'm not sure what that means. I'm how are we talking sure about... binaries or what? <laughs> That's the problem yeah, with maybe, 140 So characters. there are things like, um, like test flight, for instance. Do you know test, test, test flight? flight? Is... Yeah, I use that all the yeah. time. Okay, cool. Um, so they don't provide a uh, they don't provide the source for their SDK. They only provide a pre-compiled static library. Um, maybe that's what he meant. Mm -hmm. uh, um, well, first of all, I would say to the test flight team, uh, open source it. But obviously, they have their reasons, um, and it it already works um, because the the pod spec uh, can indicate libraries that the users' projects should link in which is normally used for things like uh, if you're if a pod requires lib xml or whatever but it would it works just as well for any other static libraries so it can already be done and there are people discussing this on the uh on the coco pods uh, issue tracker um i guess if that's what he meant then it it works but i yeah i would still prefer of course a open source version um but what can we do further to push for greater adoption? Um, I think I haven't done any big announcement yet on like Coco Dev, that is the big Coco mailing list, um, because I first there are, there are a lot of things that I first want to have done before I open the floodgates, because I I think these are things that a lot of people will ask about. So I would yeah I don't know that's not my the way I work. I want to have a reasonable assumption of what people are going to need, implement that, and then announce it. In the meantime, it's open for everybody to discover, but I'm not going to announce it and then say, oh, yeah, that doesn't work yet, that doesn't work yet, that doesn't work yet. So that would probably push uh, a lot of adoption once I finally do that. Uh, until that time, what we really need is people um, that that use libraries to migrate them to... Uh, to using them through cocoa pods uh, so creating specifications for that even if it's and if it's if they do it only locally like in their pod file in line then please also take the time at some point to extract that and push it to um, to the public repository um, and i think the faster we get to the point where it's like the big one oh and where that, that that's also the time that we'll do like big announcements um well that that will definitely help if people want to help out. So, just go onto our mailing list or the issue tracker and ask what things, what you're good at, what you if you want to help out with certain areas or whatever. And there's plenty of work to do. I think that's really the the biggest important thing right now is to get some of the uh, important features done so that we can really really start driving it. One th big thing, and there are, I, I'm sure you have listeners that are very good at that. Um, is uh, things like like the Rails guides uh, guide for if you're if you're a user of CocoaPods how 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 to set it up uh, initially that's obvious but but also guides for uh, library authors why should they care uh, how do we handle versioning uh, semantic versioning uh, why do we do that why uh, why not just Git hashes these are questions that we get all the time from uh, library authors so. Um, and and right now that's scattered over. We have we do have wiki pages describing these things, but having a good set of coherent guides about these things would definitely help authors understand 
how we do things and why we do them that way, and then uh, and then contribute specifications for the libraries. But it's picking up. I mean, in the meantime, I'm very glad the way it goes in the way that I haven't announced anything, but people are discovering it by themselves, and um, adoption is definitely every day more. So. I guess we'll we'll get there. What what we what we really need is is time. <laughs> if anybody has some uh, lying around, then uh, you play in a, a few different communities, namely Ruby and Objective C. And I think in the Ruby community, uh, GitHub by far is the center of gravity for our open source work. Um, but it's not true of every community. There's other um, repositories and other community sites that mm. house the bulk of of open source or shared source uh, projects in those languages. According to GitHub Explorer, Objective-C is the 10th most popular language on, on GitHub. Have you found that the bulk of Objective-C and Cocoa open source that you found is on GitHub, or are there other places that uh, where they're playing? Before the whole, uh, before I started on Cocoa Pods, I found that, there are, that the majority of the libraries that are being released since the inception of GitHub have been on GitHub, but the Objective-C community goes back way before GitHub. Um, so there's a lot of people just posting tarballs on their blog, things like that. Or they use uh, they use uh, SourceForge or uh, what, what, what have you, uh, Bitbucket, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I th- yeah, I think a lot of the people, that, since we have iOS, there's a whole new community you have the, the older Objective-C community and you have the new Objective-C community. And the newer ones tend to use GitHub, I think. I haven't seen many that don't use GitHub. But some of the the older libraries, the older authors, yeah, that's not that easy. They, they, they tend to be all over the place. So Git support in Xcode is relatively new. I'm trying to remember which version introduced that. But have you seen a spike in GitHub adoption as that feature rolled out into Xcode? No, and I think they already had Git support before I started on CocoaPods, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm not. I'm. I'm not a big Xcode.app user personally. So that's interesting. What, what are you using? And I, I guess are you still using Mac Ruby and Ruby Cocoa more than straight Objective C? Um, no, <laughs> I mean it could be anything uh, any given day. I so I use uh, MacFim. Mm-hmm. That's why I wrote the file browser for it. I used the TextMate before that, but it was uh, TextMate was just getting too slow for big files for me, and that's the reason I switched to Fim. And I'm, I'm still, I, I still feel like a, a huge Fim noob. Uh, I mean, people look at me weird. Why I would even want a file browser? So, um, I do everything there so that I know just the set of commands and ed- editing tools that I uh, tend to use. Xcode editor. I'm not a real big fan of. I'm I'm not a real big fan of Xcode.app at all. Uh, it just does things the way my brain doesn't work, I guess. And obviously, there's a lot of still a lot of issues with Xcode four. Uh, that's no secret. Everybody complains about that. Um, Listeners of this podcast uh, won't blame you for using Vim. By far, we've had a few episodes now where we uh, talk about everybody's favorite text editor. But you're using MagVim. That's interesting. What uh, draws you to the GUI shell around Vim that uh, you don't get from the terminal? Um, I'm a, I'm a GUI guy. Just that, that I think that's the, the simplest solution. I like, I, I'm not particularly interested in computers, actually. I just want things that work. And, uh, I don't find, I love the terminal. That's not the reason, but I find that, um, uh, the GUI and the, the set of, uh, key bindings that I know for any other application on the platform, in this t- case, OS X, um, I find it more intuitive to to seamlessly switch those things. Um, and I like a, fi- a, a, a visual file browser that has a contextual menu for thingies. And that's that's not the way people work in a terminal, I find. Uh, that would mean I would I would have to really mas- more master FIM. And that's, I don't, I don't really care about that. I just want to get the things done that I want to get done. And I'm, I feel I'm more productive in a, uh, environment that allows me to, um, use the GUI instead of looking at a beautiful terminal. But yeah, the only way to really interact with it is the keyboard. It seems a lot of folks go one way or the other. They're in a full blown IDE like Xcode and everything's in 
really one window or one app at least, or they'll go to the terminal and they'll multiplex with Tmux or something like that. If you're in this in-between world, how are you managing your, your test suite run loop and what other tools do you use other than MacBoon to, to work? Um, not much. I use Xcode just to build. Uh, and if, if possible, uh, I, I'll just use Xcode build on the terminal because I really do love the terminal and, and navigating through source uh, that way. Um, but I'm 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 fairly simple. I, I I just use I just use MacFim, but it could have as, just as well been text edit, I guess. Um, so I'm I'm not really the right person to give any information. I think on uh, on certain uh, speed editing tips or whatever. Um, uh, by the way, regarding Xcode, I I recently heard about App Code. I think I haven't used it myself, but it seems to be that there is an alternative for Xcode.app if people are uh, uh, feeling that Xcode 4 isn't helping them out. So that might be a tip. But I just run tests, things like from the terminal, like most people in the Ruby community do. Um, and that's basically it. I'm not sure if there's any specific anything specific you would want to hear. So as manager, maintainer of this project, I'm sure that as specs are, are added, you're constantly discovering new open source in the Cocoa mm -hmm. world. What are some of the most interesting projects that you've seen come across your radar? Oh, I've seen so many nowadays that I have to really think about that. Um, definitely one, uh, because uh, we're so spoiled in the Ruby community with uh, blocks, is called uh, Block Kit by... Uh, I'm not going to... Uh, butcher his name. Let's see. What is? We'll add that to the show notes. Yeah, it's uh, Z Zachary Waldowski. Uh, Blockskit. That's a, a very good one. Um, I use uh, Quincy Kit, which is a crash reporter, uh, so a bit like Test Flight, but another one. Um, JSON Kit, obviously very fast at JSON handling. It's amazing how we have these naming conventions in our different communities. So Kit in the Cocoa world is what in Ruby we would at one time axe as or foo or any of these other trendy names. Yeah. Well, Kit, I, I think Kit was originally more like a um, like a framework mm -hmm. idea. So Kit me implies it's a framework, not just one one problem so, uh, solution. But I'm not sure. It, uh, yeah, but it's definitely a Objective C uh, Coco uh, naming convention. I wasn't a big fan of the whole XS uh, naming convention. By the way, it didn't. It 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 felt like at some point people were just trying to mang mangle the names into that, and, and it didn't really. It wasn't declarative anymore at some point. But I forgot a few specific names, so maybe just cut that out. <laughs> We've mentioned uh, test flight a number of times, and I'm a big fan of test flight. So. Uh, for those that don't know, it's uh, I've used it for iOS applications to uh, do over-the-air betas to beta users before we put them in the App Store. What um, I guess that's how you're using it as well. Yeah, well, I I used Test Flight. I I used to use Test Flight, but I don't I don't use it anymore. I've, I've switched personally to a Hockey App. Uh, I've seen that one too. So, what, why do you like Hockey over Test Flight? Uh, first of all, I pay Hockey App, so I know I'm the customer. Um, that might be, uh, I don't know, that's my ideological way of how I look at products. Pay for apps that you use so that you know they'll hang around? Well, I mean, the more the way, if, if you're not paying for the app, then you are the product. It's more the feeling mm -hmm. I get with it. Um, also, uh, I wasn't able to... Uh, upload small binaries stably last time with test flight so I, I i started to get a bit annoyed about that uh and hockey app is uh, it's a bit simpler especially in the way it looks it isn't that, that lickable uh, ui that you have with test flight but <laughs> it works for me and that's i just want to be able to upload a binary and have it work and um and they i have their crash reporter and and also their other uh a beta update AP, SDK that's all open source I, I also really like that because I can just dig in and see what it's doing or change something yeah but 
obviously, if test flight's working for you, it's working. I just, I don't really like the whole, if you're not paying for it, then you're, then you're the product uh, type of feeling. So true. So who's your open source hero? Um, I don't have like a real hero hero, but the one that, that really taught me a lot of the, well, just basic programming stuff as well, is definitely Laurent Sansonetti of Ruby Coco and MacRuby fame. I mean, he's a Belgian, but he does awesome stuff. <laughs> you want to hold that against him? No. Um, we'll, I mean, he, 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 he promised me a lot of uh, good beer, so <laughs> we'll figure it out. Well, thanks, Eloy. Certainly appreciate your insight into CocoaPods and Objective-C and, and Ruby. This is an exciting project, so we'll help spread the word and hopefully get an influx of new specs into this thing. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. And even if there's just Ruby developers that feel like they want to work on some side project thing but don't have a real itch at that time, uh, I, I can use any Ruby developer to just, just uh, give, a, give a shout on the mailing list and uh, we'll get you something to do. Absolutely. Thanks, Eli. Yeah. Uh, thank you too, Win and Adam by proxy. <laughs>